Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Payman Salek, and I'm an associate professor of computer science at uh, MIU. I have an undergraduate degree in electrical engineering and a master's degree in computer science. And um, I did my master's here at MIU. I arrived here about 23 years ago, um, and I started doing my uh, master's in computer science. But beyond that, I've actually done about 30 years of I, um, IT work. Mm -hmm. I started in the early you know, 90s, and um, I started with, with doing some, you know, low-level low languages, and then, then eventually, um, you know, started doing C, C++, Java, etc. And um, I have worked for a, a number of large companies in the United States, uh, Bank of America, Principal Financial Group, Ally Bank, and Uline being uh, some of those companies in the capacity of software developer, software designer, architect, manager, application development manager, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But, um, and then this is a talk that I have actually given a few times to Compro students, but um, you know, at the, at the request of the department, I'm, I'm giving it again. My journey started a long time ago. Uh, this was way, way before I started, you know, working IT, university, any of that. Uh, as a matter of fact, I probably even barely could speak at this point. Um, I was born in, in Iran, uh, also known as Persia, which is this orange, uh, you know, country right in the middle of the Middle East, surrounded by Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Turkey, Iraq, and a number of other countries. I was born in Tehran, and uh, Tehran is actually a big city. You know, the, the greater Tehran area is probably host, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 million population. It's a huge metropolitan area. And um, the mountains um, in, 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 in Tehran are actually, this is a real photo. This is not a Photoshop. And they, you know, anywhere in the city, you can miss them because Tehran is right at the you know, foothills of, of the Albors mountain range. And this is what you see. This is your daily view, provided that, you know, that day is supposed to be a, a, a clear day like this one, which is actually rare in Tehran. In reality, what you see in Tehran is something more like this, unfortunately, because of the air pollution and, and the traffic and, and just in general, the whole pollution in that area. Um, again, uh, not proud of the fact that Tehran is probably one of the most polluted cities in the world on a daily basis. But anyhow, um, again, uh, today I'm going to talk about my relationship to TM and how TM affected my life. And um, again, I'm going back to where it all started. I remember as, as, as a young child, um, then this is in the 70s, I I was thinking about the fact that what is the meaning of life, the universe, and everything, and what is the meaning of you know infinity? What is infinity? And that that would that always you know bewildered me. So I was thinking about those things, and uh, maybe not right this moment when this picture was taken, but uh, this was on my mind mm -hmm. even from a young age. And it was about that time that I, for the first time, maybe I was nine or ten years old, uh, I heard from my uncle that there are Tibetan monks who can levitate. And it was really amazing. It's, it was a fantastic idea in my mind that, you know, if if another human being can do that, maybe maybe I can do it. Too. That was the beginning of uh, my interest in in meditation and then things like that, you know. So, but then I started meditating when I was 18. Uh, the summer after high school, I was searching for TM or better, any kind of meditation. And I found TM and I learned TM as a matter of fact, on October 7th, which is today is October 7th, and it happened to be, I learned TM on October 7th of 1988, that is 35 years ago, exactly on this day. And um, it has been an interesting part of my life. Um, at the beginning, just like everybody else, I was very skeptical. And over time, you know, I, I, I saw the effects and what it was at the beginning was that I, you know, I would I would meditate and it, it was good, it was okay, um, and it was even better when I was uh, visiting the TM center that I used to visit, and I used to go there quite often because I liked the meditations in the in the group group meditations that we had. <clears throat> I don't know, 20, 30, 40 people would show up. Sometimes you know the class was so full that we had to sit in the in the hallway and in on the stairs, um, and then meditate. So. 
that was a very popular you know TM center in Tehran that we used to go to. And I think it was in that same uh, TM center that um, I saw a picture of the Golden Domes uh, of, mm -hmm. of Maharshi International University. Um, I don't think it was this particular picture. Um, I don't have access to that particular picture, but it was a poster. Um, and I think it showed both of the domes, the, lady, the, the women's dome and, and the men's dome. And um, I was enjoying my meditations, you know, in groups. And I had this idea that if I, if I enjoyed so much with such a small group of people in the middle of a crazy, one of the craziest cities in the world, so, so noisy, so overpopulated, so polluted, uh, what it would feel like to do meditation with thousands of people in a place uh, that is actually, you know, outside of the big cities and is quiet and is peaceful um, and in Fairfield, Iowa. And I had heard all, all good things about Fairfield. So anyways, I had this idea, um, you know, since, you know, my er very early 20s. But at the time, you know, at the same time that I started TM, that same fall, and as a matter of fact, maybe within the same weeks or days, um, I, I was 18. I had just finished high school. So I started my undergraduate as an electrical engineering major in uh, Tehran Polytechnic, which is one of the university, you know, one of the universe, you know, country's good, good universities. You know, we had I had really good and smart classmates. And as a matter of fact, uh, mm -hmm. one of them is an MIU faculty. Professor Sio Maktavakuli. But anyways, at the time, um, my study and, and my background and my expertise had nothing to do with computer science. Uh, my area of expertise was electromagnetic radiation and antennas. And in particular, this kind of antenna that you see on my, on my screen um, <laughs> that you know, barely exists these days. This is, this is a VHF antenna. Um, and I think uh, they call it Yagi, Yagi Uda. I think there are, these are Japanese names, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the electrical engineers who discovered the radiation patterns of such antennas. <clears throat> and I was working on, you know, discovering the radio, you know, kind of computing, calculating the radiation patterns of such antennas. And, and it's, uh, I don't know, for anybody who has ever done any work in, in the theory of electromagnetism, uh, you basically, it's, it's actually super simple, I can tell you. You just have to solve the, you know, Maxwell's equations in uh, a three-dimensional, a spherical or cylindrical, you know, um, system. And then, and then, you know, usually, you know, Bessel's function and, and then the partial differential equations that you have to solve. And you ultimately come up with something like this, which, to be honest with you, I haven't, you know, touched this kind of math for so many years that I'm not so sure what it all is, is, is the meaning of this. Um, in general, I know what it means. In, in general, this is the electromagnetic radiation patterns. Uh, and as you can see, it depends on, uh, you know, parameters like theta and phi and, you know, R, which is the radius, how far you are from the, from the antenna and so on. But ultimately, uh, this was my entry to computer science because computation of formulas like this are sometimes so difficult that electrical engineers and engineers in general um, resort to doing um, uh, numerical calculations using a computer. And that's exactly what I did. And I, I wrote my first computer program in a language called Visual Basic. And then later I converted that same program. I think what you see on my screen is probably the C, C++ version of it. And um, <clears throat> What you see is basically the radiate, what we call the radiation pattern of, of, of a TV antenna. Um, and, and radiation and reception are, are just symmetric. So if, if the radiation has a strength in one direction, it can you know, receive you know, strongly in that same direction. So that's, uh, that's, what, that's what I did. And that, that was my, um, I did it as a project, like my senior year project uh, when I was finishing my electrical engineering degree. About the same time uh, that I was finishing a school in 1993, I, I liked my meditations by that time. I was doing TM retreats and, you know, very regular with my TM uh, practice. Um, I, I did the TM City course, uh, which is the advanced form of uh, transcendental meditation. And it was in 1993. 
Um, and anyone who can recognize me in this picture um, is going to get a free laptop. No, I'm just kidding. I don't think a laptop is. Um, I'm actually the, the person with a mustache on the top left of this, this image. This was a long time ago and uh, a few pounds ago. But anyways, this is uh, this was my TM City course, and this this was probably the graduation banquet, and this was again in Iran, um, thirty years ago. But anyways, around that same time, I, I finished uh, school, and I started working on you know some projects, and the last few years of school, I had done my electives in in hardware engineering, and and I was familiar with microprocessors and computer architecture and things like that. So I was designing, you know, <clears throat> this is not my design. This is an Arduino. Um, this is a commercial thing that you can buy at, you know, uh, any any store or order online. But, you know, I, I would design circuits like this. Um, and then, you know, not only design the, the electronics of it, but also write some assembly code on top of it. So I did some of that as, as, as some freelance projects in the in the mid to late 90s. And then that same thing, that, ex that experience that I gained there, you know, took me to industrial computers and what we call distributed com uh, control systems. Distributed control systems, this is a, hey, you know, way, way before internet. Uh, this is a concept that was, that was there way before internet. And the concept has to do with big, big industrial plants that need to be controlled by a computer. So computer signals and electrical signals are running, you know, um, in in wires um, around, you know, campuses of, of of big industries, and there are big computers that that manage and the, the whole process. So, um, and and it's a very interesting thing. I, I work for a kind of like a startup company in Iran, which was a small company, but we were trying to compete with the giants like ABB and Siemens and and companies like that. And we would actually win projects because you know we we were able to you know uh, offer those projects at at a much uh, uh, lower cost. And our projects were in you know industrial you know control systems for you know power plants and petrochemical plants and you know things like that. So that that basically was my basis. That was my entry point into serious serious programming, and it was I was probably the perfect match for the job because. I had, uh, you know, the background in electrical engineering, so I was completely familiar with, you know, electronics and electric circuits. And then I was also, you know, had some expertise in computer programming, but this was my first time actually doing a high level, you know, computer program other than the toy uh, applications that I had worked on a long time ago. So <clears throat> that basically took me through the 90s. But in the meantime, I like I said, I was meditating and I had seen pictures of the dome and I was aware of MIU. So I had it in the back of my mind that one day I'm gonna go to MIU. And that's exactly what I did. I was I was in touch with MIU and, and uh, Compro program has started in the late 90s in about the same time frame as you see in this uh, slide. And um, that's what I did. I, I Since I had already been in touch with MIU, MIU sent me an email an email was new at the time, and I have this, it was new for me. And I received an email about uh, this new program uh, that you know where you could do work study at you know some of your costs would be paid by the work that you were doing, the practicum that you were doing. So anyhow, in the November of two thousand, I came to the United States. Um, and if you were a small entry, as you can see, there's just a few people in that picture. And again, I'm the uh, the guy with a with a tie and a mustache in the middle of the picture. And um, so I couldn't make it because of my visa delays, I couldn't make it to the September entry. So I came a couple of months later, they 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 made a special entry for us. Oh, all the people who missed the big entry, which was I think 60, 70 people. That was one of the biggest entries at the time. Um, so I came in November and these were my classmates. Um, the guy to the very left of the screen, he actually turned out, um, he, uh, went out to become a very, very successful person. He became the chief technology officer of, um, I believe it's MSBC, the large bank in, in, in Europe. So anyways, they were, this was an interesting group of people. 
So again, year 2000 was the year that I moved to Fairfield. And this is a picture of, uh, you know, people meditating inside the dome. And I'm actually right here. This why when this picture was taken, I was I happened to be in the dome uh, meditating. So anyhow, this was a big draw for me that, um, you know, I, I, I learned TM and and then I was also pursuing in when I was 18, I told my dad, I, re, I remember just before I started TM, I <laughs> I sat down with my dad, uh, you know, and I said, listen, you know, he, he was not exactly approving of, you know, meditation and things like that. So I had to sit, sit him down and have a good, you know, candid conversation with him. I said, listen, you know, this is something that I really want to pursue in my life. Uh, my life is going to be dedicated to the pursuit of truth. And I'm going to pursue it in two ways. I'm going to pursue it using science and engineering and all the academic, you know, tools and books and, you know, all those good things, knowledge that is out there in the world. And I'm going to pursue it inside also, know myself, know my own consciousness. And um, so that's uh, that's what I did. And 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 so so this this theme was going on already for about 12 years by the time I came to MIU in year 2000. That, you know, inside I'm looking for knowledge and wisdom and outside, out in the world, I'm also looking for truth and knowledge and both inside and outside. And the beauty of it is, uh, you know, this 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 particular kind of meditation, TM, you know, there are all sorts of different types of, you know, meditations out there. And a lot of times, you know, you have to, you know, sacrifice either, you know, worldly matters for spiritual matters or, you know, you have to, you have to choose, pick and choose. You, you can't have both of them. And, and Maharshi was the first teacher that I heard from that you can have, you can live 200% of life. And that was an interesting idea that I don't have to sacrifice my outer life, my, my activities, my success in 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 the in the regular life you know for achieving you know what i'm trying to achieve inside which is gaining insights to my own consciousness you know diving deep inside my own consciousness so and it has been an interesting journey you know this this has been definitely an interesting journey and um, you know that's you know for one it, it brought me here this is this is what tm has done for me So this little paragraph I have borrowed uh, from one of the STC courses that for those in the field of computer science, developing our consciousness is a practical undertaking. Growing in consciousness every day through TM gives us the advantage of seeing the bigger picture, seeing the deeper underlying values that can help us solve problems with lesser stress and with greater creativity. So, and I, I, I do, you know, I, I would like to say that I have actually experienced that firsthand, that for me, it has played exactly that role of, you know, just, you know, expanding my consciousness and and also increasing my capacity to learn, increasing my capacity to, you know, for success, my energy for success and and all of that. So again, you know, I was in the Compro program. And um, I, I finished all my coursework, or at least the on-campus portion of it, in the summer of 2001. And uh, MIU offered me a job, so you know, obviously, I liked it here. I like to go to the dome and do my, you know, deep meditations there, and you know, be active in the field. So I did accept the job offer, and I and I stayed and worked for MIU for nine years. Um, excuse the mess in my office. I'm not sure this is the only photo that I could find, which is a terrible photo with a cup on the floor and, and thing, you know, an, an open, you know, stapler. But nonetheless, I think you get the idea. This was the early 2000s. We still had a CRT. Uh, you know, you, 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 we were sitting in front of an um, electron gun, basically, <laughs> uh, shooting x-rays at us. Nowadays, uh, the world is a little bit more civilized. You know, we have LCDs. So anyways, that was my time, or at least the beginning of my time at MIU. And I worked for Compro IT for about nine years. I did, you know, I was the jack of all trades. I did everything from repairing computers to network administration, system administration, programming, being a manager, being an architect, you know, you name it, database administration, you name it, I've done it. You know, front-end developer, back-end developer, you know, <laughs> 
anything you you know in almost you know anything you can imagine in IT you know I did it in those nine years. So in two thousand three, I graduated. Uh, you know, from MIU, I finished my distance education courses and I graduated MIU. As you can see, this was a happy moment, uh, as it can be for all of our Compro students. But then in 2000, you know, a little bit later, you know, after nine years of working for MIU in 2010, um, I was getting tired of being the jack of all trades. I wanted to, you know, experience the world and I also, you know, focus in one area. So, I sat down and I thought, okay, uh, yes, first of all, I'm tired of, you know, being, you know, knowing a little bit of everything uh, in IT, so to speak, not everything even, but nonetheless, a vast, you know, sea of about one inch deep. Uh, there was no depth in my knowledge. So, and I wanted to, you know, deepen my knowledge. And I thought, okay, what, what do I want to do? And um, I think what I came up with was web application development. And I said, okay, I'm going to focus in this area. So then I started doing consulting. I left MIU and I did consulting for some large financial companies, principal financial group in Des Moines, Iowa, Vanguard, Bank of America, Alloy Bank were among those uh, companies. After about five years of consulting, I came back to MIU and I, um, <clears throat> I as, as a full-time computer science faculty, I received an email from MIU. MIU was recruiting. Um, because it was the Compro program was expanding. And um, so they needed new new faculty. So I came back and I started teaching at MIU. Uh, but then again, after a few years, I left. I did about two years of consulting for a company called Uline. Uline is a $5 billion company that works in retail, pretty much like Amazon, except that in a smaller scale. And they sell usually not to households, but to companies and small businesses. It, they are located in the Chicago, Milwaukee area. I, I was there for about two years and it was it was an amazing two years. You know, I, I learned a lot about the latest and the greatest technologies, you know, doing uh, mostly backend, um, a lot of heavy, heavy, uh, you know, hands-on coding. And also I was the architect and the team lead, um, you know, for that team. So I designed a lot of systems that, you know, went, then went, you know, online, uh, you know, for 10 million customers. But anyways, um, I do like my my life in Fairfield. You know, I, uh, biking is my my favorite Fairfield. Uh, for those of you, probably most of the audience in this talk are people who are familiar with Fairfield or have lived in Fairfield. So um, Fairfield is, an, is a nice area. I mean, it's, it's you know, nature is, is close. Nature is, you know, if you're just a few minutes of walking away from you and then especially if you're on a bike you know you can you can get to these places i i think on my bike path uh, which is about 10 miles round trip i i pass through one two three four five lakes probably in in those 10 mile stretch of biking so it's a beautiful place to you know have a balanced life and have uh um, in, in enjoy the, you know, meditation, deep meditation with a group of people, um, enjoy the active life of, you know, teaching and, and doing IT work. And, and then also, you know, getting some exercise in between so that, you know, we are not completely, you know, bogged down because, you know, computer scientists are used to sitting at a chair all day long and it's, it's not a very healthy habit. So every now and then breaking that habit is not a bad idea. Anyways, um, you know, one of the things that we talk about in SDC and Marshy talks about is, is that the nature of life is to grow. You know, that that's basically the nature of life. And um, that's what I did, especially in the early 2010s, 2010 to 2015. I, you know, worked on eight different projects for different companies. I quadrupled my salary, which was very satisfying for me. Um, and the largest project that I worked on was about was a $20 million project. It was for one of the banks, and we basically wrote the entire an entire online banking platform for a bank with uh 10 million customers. So and then we had 1 million logins a day, like 5 million transactions. You know, it was it was a massive operation. Um and it was it was successful. You know, that was in the early 2010s. In, more accurately, 2013 to 2015 timeframe, I worked on this project. 
Um, <clears throat> during that time, those five years, I moved 10 times. Um, and I have a friend who says, uh, who is in the habit of saying that three moves is equivalent to a house fire. And imagine eight, you know, 10 moves is even better than that. By that time, you know, my life was distilled to a, a car full of personal stuff. <laughs> Everything else was gone. And then ultimately I came back to Fairfield and settled down in, in, in Fairfield. But I also did a lot of traveling. I traveled to eight different countries during that time. I crossed the Atlantic 20 times in two years. And that's a lot in case you, you're wondering. Um, I boarded a hundred planes and then collected a hundred thousand miles on my credit card. And these are not business miles because a lot of people, you know, especially consultants do a lot of traveling for business. But this was just personal, personal travel, 100,000 miles of personal travel, which is quite a lot. And again, a ton of work experience. So that, that was my consulting life those five years. In that short amount of time, I learned a ton of stuff. And that's what happens when you do consulting, because, you know, you have to learn a ton of stuff in a very short amount of time and then be able to be effective, I don't know, for six months, for a year. And then before you know it and before you get used to the job, you have to move on. You have to move on to the next project, next company. And then, you know, that company is using a whole bunch of other technologies and other things and different perspective, different things that, that they're doing. And, and you just have to get used to it. And it's constant change. And again, you know, in the middle of this constant change, which can be absolutely overwhelming. I mean, if you think about it, moving is difficult. And you, if you ask any human being, they don't want to move. They don't want to change. Change is difficult. And... Um, you know, but also progress is necessary. I think ultimately after doing all this change and you know, in my life, I, I, I realized that maybe a balance is, is good between all of that, the balance between, you know, maintain the current status and then, then some, some, some progress. But nonetheless, in the middle of all this craziness, I think what kept me rooted and grounded was, was again TM. You know, I was, even when I was working for Corporate America, TM was the best aid. I would I would get up in the morning, do my TM, and then go to work, come back from work. Again, you know, uh, maybe go to the gym or come back, do my do, do my TM, and then do my dinner. And that, that was my routine. That was my daily routine. And that's what kept me sane in the middle of all of this change, which can be overwhelming for any human being. doesn't matter how, um, how much you have appetite for change and for challenges. It ultimately gets you. It's, it's not an easy thing to have so much change in your life. So anyways, anyhow, another interesting quote that I found that was you know, similar to the slides and then the topic that I was talking about from probably again from the SDC course is the nature of life is to grow in any area of knowledge or life. One plans for their goals and activities based on their understanding, model of the reality and domain that they are functioning. Everyone always wants more and more in life, and it is only with a full knowledge and understanding of what is possible that can one effectively pursue and realize their goals. So this is an interesting thing. It talks about having perspective and having perspective and have, you know, knowing possibilities. And having an open mind is, 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 is a good thing. You know, being focused is great. Being focused on accomplishing, you know, day-to-day -day tasks is fantastic. But at the same time, we need a tool, we need a way to kind of step back from our day-to-day -day activities and kind of broaden our, our understanding, our knowledge, our vision of reality, our life, our, you know, the direction that we are going in. And that, that helps us, you know, um, understand where we are. It helps our success because ultimately, you know, if you're too tied up in the details of what we are doing, then you know we kind of lose track of the big picture. We lose track of the big aims that we have in our life. Every now and then we have to step out of that mold of day-to-day -day activities, kind of a step back and look at the big picture. Now TM does exactly that. And that has been my greatest tool because in TM, what you do every time that you transcend, you go inside and you basically, you retract from the point value, from the focus value of knowledge, life, activity, whatever it is that you have your attention on, and you retract from it and, and you expand your consciousness. And that expansion is exactly that, is this having the big picture. It, it helps you achieve the big picture, see the big picture, have the broad vision and have the perspective. So 
and that is the relation of um, you know my experience and then this this beautiful slide here one of the things that I learned a long time ago from one of our dear professors and very senior professors here at uh, MIU, computer science professor, Dr. Guthrie, was that we can solve any problem by introducing another extra layer of indirection or abstraction. And it may say, and, you know, I actually teach a whole course about this, just one sentence. I teach a whole graduate 500 level course about this. There's a course called Advanced Software Development, and it talks about design patterns and OO analysis and design. And we just talk about this. That, and the funny thing is that at the beginning, this may seem like an exaggeration, but the more you deepen your understanding of computer science and OO, you realize that this is absolutely true. There is no exaggeration this, in this statement. Any problem, and when we say any, we mean any, we're not joking. Any problem in computer science can be solved by introducing an extra level of indirection or abstraction. So basically what it means is that if any problem seems too complicated, the solution is not in the problem. Marshy talks about this, the, the, the principle of the second element. So he says when there's a dark room and maybe there's a group of people sitting in this dark room, they're discussing the whole topic of the darkness and how to resolve darkness. And you know, suddenly somebody, you know, maybe a janitor steps in the room and turns on the switch and the room is suddenly full of light. And, and the idea here is, you know, sometimes the problems cannot be solved at the level of problems. And we need to solve the problem by bringing a second element, having perspective, having abstraction, stepping out of the problem. And this, uh, this process of a stepping out of the problem is exactly what this British computer scientist is, is talking about. And in computer science, we do this all the time. We do this all the time. Anytime a problem is too complicated, we step out of the problem and say, okay, okay, wait a second. So let's look at it from an abstract you know, um, perspective. What does the system do in, in like you know, few sentences, few major functionalities of the system? And then we basically, uh, or, or if a system is too big, we just divide it, divide and, 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 and conquer. So this, this is a very, very you know, helpful theme in our area of computer science. Now, interestingly, human consciousness or intelligence is structured in the same manner, meaning that it has levels of hierarchy, levels of complexity. And the same principle applies, optimized from the most abstract, powerful universal levels. By understanding this, one can have a worldview, model, or paradigm for optimal achievement. What do we mean by that? What, what I mean is that, you know, even in terms of your own consciousness, you can, you can apply the principle of the second element. Any problem is too complicated, you can step out of the problem and look at it from a, you know, just, just, just broaden your perspective. Broadening your perspective is the thing that, um, that helps, you know, see the problem in a better light and introducing the second element. So I wanna leave you with this thought. Um, any questions from the audience or the people who are online? Okay, you know, we finished, uh, it was, I was hoping to keep it short and sweet <laughs> so I don't want to take too much of your uh, weekend time. Uh, thank you for attending and have a good afternoon.